Negotiations for the National Fairgrounds continue, and we could be seeing races very, very soon at the National Fairgrounds. And it looks like JD Motorsports has officially announced her second full-time driver going into 2021. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. We got quite a few NASCAR stories to discuss here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. The first story we're going to talk about is the Hendrick 5 team. Is that the 5 is officially back on the shops for the 2021. The logo number of the car is basically going to look like the number that Casey Kane ran. The number looks really, really good. It's been the number they ran for a very, very long time before they switched over to the 9 car. Going into 2018, when we got rid of the 5 car so they could have the 9 car, they will have the 5 number car officially back at Hendrick Motorsports. And I like the number of the car, and it looks really, really cool. Now, there was people complaining about the OCD, and that wasn't completely in order. It is what it is. I wish it was all in order, to be honest, as well. But... The 5 is officially back at Hendrick Motorsports, and the logo looks really, really awesome. On to the next story. We're going to talk about Cole Custer as his 2021 Haas scheme has officially been revealed for the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series season. I like this one a lot more than last year. I think last year's Haas scheme was a little bit more, I think it was a little bit gray as well too, but it wasn't as gray as this. I really do like the color scheme of it. So Raw, I think is better than last year's, if my honest opinion. It shines a lot better as well. It looks like a really good scheme. Again, I think that this car before was all right. It was pretty good when Kurt Busch ran, you know, the red scheme. But overall, I think that that scheme overall is really, really awesome as well. Like I said, I do really like the paint scheme as well. And I cannot wait to see this paint scheme out on the racetrack going forward in 2021. Because it's probably going to be the major scheme he's going to run all year. And I do like the scheme quite a bit. On to the next story. First Pacific Funding will be sponsoring Jeremy Clements for multiple races in 2021, we have two races that are currently confirmed. He'll be racing at, at Las Vegas at Phoenix, but there are more additional races that are going to be announced in the future that he will have first specific funding as his major sponsor for 2021. Great to see sponsors continuing to sponsor in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I think first specific funding, I believe that they sponsored Jeremy Clements last year, if I'm not mistaken. And they will be coming back for a certain amount of races in 2021. Uh, I think Fast Repair Vehicles is another one of his sponsors, but at least he'll have multiple sponsors and not just one sponsor sponsoring him for a majority of the year. Great to see First Civic Funding continuing to help out teams and Jeremy Clements going forward in 2021. On to the next story. NBM Motorsports on late on Friday evening announced some of their plans that they have announced for 2021. Timmy Hill and Chad Fincham are going to qualify for the Daytona 500 in Ford cars. Now in the Xfinity Series, they will run Toyotas, but for Daytona 500 in both of their cars, they will have Ford as their major manufacturer. Timmy Hill is expected to run full-time for the Xfinity Series points, and it looks like Chad Fincham is going to be running select Cup Series races. I think it said on that, if I'm not mistaken from the article, it said he'll be running at Nashville and the run at the road course races as well. And the second Cup car may not be the number 49 car. The numbers that might be considered are the 61 car, which is the Atari Racing car in the Xfinity Series, the number 67, the number 46, and the number 72. To me, I think that they're either going to go with 46 or they're going to go with 61. 46 seems reasonable since before they went to the 49 in 2020, I think in 2019, they did have the 46 car. They had Joey Gase when he was over at MBM in 2019, the Xfinity Series. He ran the 46 car in the Cup Series in select starts when he ran the Cup Series. So I do think that the 46 car is very likely going to be the number that they are going to choose. I'm assuming Chad Fincham would drive the 46 and Timmy Hill would drive the select races in the 66 car. And I assume for the races that Timmy Hill is not going to race, Chad Fincham will probably take over the 66. But it's really cool to see that we're at least going to have them running two cars at the Daytona 500. It helps the entry list as well for Daytona 500 as well as more cars could be anticipated to run. We know that College Racing is going to also be running at the Daytona 500 as well, and they're supposed to be running at least 10 select starts in 2021. We also do know for a fact that there's some other organizations like Beard Motorsports and other teams that are looking to maybe. I haven't heard much about Beard Motorsports. Gone Brothers has indicated that it look like they might be running, though I've had no confirmation on that whatsoever as well. So we now know for sure that NBA Motorsports has announced some of their plans going forward for 2021, and I cannot wait to see what NBA Motorsports will do in 2021. On to the next story. Daniel Dye will be running full-time in the ARCA East Series in 2021 for Ben Kennedy Racing. I would think that Daniel Dye is generally a really, really awesome driver. I think it's really cool that he's getting a full-time opportunity in the ARCA East Series. You know, I think a lot of people on Twitter, especially 
are major, major fans of. I think Daniel Dye is going to bring a lot to the table. He's running two races in the ARCA East Series in 2020. Scored one top 10 there. He had a 13th place average finish. But again, on only two starts, it's really not that bad of a start for your career in the ARCA East Series, you know. And the fact that he's going to get a full-time opportunity is really, really cool to see. Now, what are his ultimate goals? His goal is to try to go out there and, you know, win ARCA East Championships. This field, there is definitely some competition. There's a possibility Christian Eckes might be racing in the ARCA East Series. So that's going to be some really tough competition if Christian Eckes is going back to the ARCA East Series. But with Dino Day going there, that field gets a lot stronger. He also ran really well in the Snowball Derby not too recently, and he did pretty well over there as well. So I think Daniel Dye will bring a lot to the table for the ARCA East Series, especially with Ben Kenny Racing, and really awesome to see that Daniel Dye will be going full-time with Ben Kenny Racing in 2021. On to the next story. It was announced earlier today that Jeff Garner has officially become the second full-time driver with JD Motorsports in 2021, driving the Zero Car in 2021. I've always liked Jeff Renner. I don't think his performances always have been the greatest, if we're going to be honest. He definitely has some strong runs. You know, he raced at Joe Gibbs in 2019 before he got let go because of IK9. That partnership and sponsorship really never went that far, if we're going to be honest. But Jeff Renner has some decent runs. had quite a few top 20s with JD Motorsports. Again, they're not really a top-tier team, if we're going to be honest. So it's kind of hard to tell how good of a driver truly Jeff Earnhardt really is when he's over at a team like JD Motorsports, you know? I mean, he and Colby Howard, who are both going to be teammates next year, they both overall had some decent years in 2020 when they ran, you know? I think Jeff Renner had some decent stats as well in 2020, some top 20s. I think he got maybe one or two top 10s in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, with this organization. Again, a lot on Super Speedos. But you know, on mile and a half tracks where you really can show off your talent, especially on short tracks, well, he overachieved at those kind of racetracks. And I think that Jeff Renner in 2021 is going to have some decent runs with that team as well. Now, what are ultimately the goals for Jeff Earnhardt in 2021? His goal, like I mentioned for Colby Howard, his goal is to try to finish in the top 20 in the NASCAR Xfinity Series points. I think that's a pretty reasonable goal, especially though the Xfinity Series world has gotten a little bit better this year in 2021. It also has gotten weaker as well with a driver like Chase Briscoe, who drove for them this past in the 98th this past year in the Xfinity Series. He'll be going full-time to the 14 team in 2021. So, Jeff Renner's goal is to try to finish top 20, try to score at least a couple top 10s if he can, and also try to get as many top 20s as possible. Just be consistent, don't crash a lot, and have some really strong runs with this team, but really awesome to see Jeff Renner being announced as a second full-time driver. But the other thing I wanted to say was, when is Ryan Vargas going to get announced? He brings sponsorship. I really hope Ryan Vargas ends up becoming the third full-time driver, whether it is in the four or the sixth car, I really hope that Ryan Vargas becomes a full-time driver with this team. Not only does it bring a lot of funding and sponsorship from that TikTok sponsorship, but Ryan Vargas does bring a lot to the table and is a very talented driver as well, and he's worked his ass off. So I really do hope that all three of these guys can race together. If not, though, I think both the two drivers, like Jeff Earnhardt and Colby Howard, their goal is to try and finish top 20, but I am really hoping that Ryan Vargas can join Jeff Earnhardt and Colby Howard and can help both those guys be a little bit stronger in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We're really cool to see that Jeff Earnhardt is going to be going full-time with JD Motorsports in 2021. And now we're going to to the final story of this episode as negotiations for the National Fairgrounds are still continuing at this moment. As it was announced earlier today, Speedway Motorsports is announced that negotiations are ongoing for the National Fairgrounds with potential hosting of races as for the Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and Truck Series, or the smaller series as well, as early as 2022. Now, it was also announced today that Bristol Motor Speedway is also looking to explore an agreement with the National Fairgrounds going forward in 2022. Now, really one of the big reasons why we're here at National Super Speedway in the first place is the compensation so we can go to Nashville. A lot of fans have been really pushing for the National Fairgrounds to come to the NASCAR Cup Series because it really started a couple years ago when he started renovating the track, but their track was not ready. It was not going to be ready for official racing from NASCAR because the track is really old. They haven't really updated. They really don't have any of the updations of like safer barriers and safety as well. So it was going to take a long time. But according to what I remember, if I'm not mistaken, the money that goes into the tickets for National Super Speedway for all the races and events that do take place at the National Super Speedway, that funding is actually going to go back into 
funding the National Fairgrounds. And also remember this, Dover lost one of the races well for the National Super Speedway in compensation so that we could have a race at the National Fairgrounds as well in the near future. The fact that the National Fairgrounds might be coming sooner than I thought, because I'll be honest with you, I didn't think that there was going to be a potential of there being a National Fairgrounds race as early as 2022. I really don't think that's going to be the case that there's going to be a race in 2022. It's very possible we could see definitely a race. I think the earliest we could see a race if they start and continue to try to renovate the racetrack. I really think the earliest we could be seeing races at that track is probably 2023. So I'm not saying in the next two years. I'm saying the next three years we could definitely be seeing racing. But I think that whatever funding they get, and especially that's one thing with COVID-19. I think Tennessee's been one of the more open states when it comes to COVID-19. So they might be able to have more fans, a lot of stands, maybe like 50% capacity. And all the money they get from like accession stands and all the ticket sales as well should go into the funding to help the National Fairgrounds from all the races as well. I don't think any of the IndyCar race funding is going to go into the National Fairgrounds, but Nashville is becoming a very hot area for NASCAR right now and for motorsports as well. I mean, we're going back to Nashville Super Speedway for the first time since 2011. And in the IndyCar series, we're going to have their first ever street race in IndyCar. So motorsports is growing in the Nashville area. And there's a possibility there might not only be one race at Nashville, but there might be two races in Nashville, one being at the Fairgrounds Speedway. They haven't raced in since 2000 and possibly the National Super Speedway because the agreement is, to my knowledge, where the National Super Speedway is a four-year agreement from 2021 to 2024. So the contract ends the year that the TV contract ends. So as of right now, National Super Speedway will be around for at least four seasons. But regardless, man, this is really, really exciting. A lot of fans have been wanting more and more short tracks, and there's been really pushed for tracks like North Wilkesboro and Rockingham and the National Fairgrounds to come around. I know they could maybe in the future maybe have some races at Rockingham if they can get the track renovated up to speed. North Wilkesboro, they maybe can make it a museum. I don't really see any race seven North Wilkesboro. That track is in such bad shape. I know they've tried to work on that track in the past, but that track is in such bad shape right now. It's probably not going to be possible for the rate be, to be races at North Wilkesboro. But at least I racing, we can have race in North Wilkesboro. That's really cool to see. But yeah, really, really exciting to hear the news about National Fairgrounds today. And the fact that the mayor is very, very confident and very, very happy to say that they do want racing at the National Fairgrounds is really, really, really exciting to see. And that's that's something I'm really, really excited about. I'm really excited for your future short track racing. We also have a race at Auto Club that's happening in the next couple of years. I know it's not as delayed out to 2023, but it also could go out the window. So you really want to start if you want to get this race and more short tracks in, in the country, just in case the Auto Club project ends up going up in smoke and the project ends up going away. You want to try to get these national fairgrounds back up because the fans really do want there to be a race at national fairgrounds. But the news that I heard today is very, very exciting, and I cannot wait to hear more about the National Fairgrounds and more possibilities about that in the future. So, anyway, that is going to be for today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel, so you can be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Links in the description below for that, and comment with your thoughts on today's video. Also, support me on Patreon as well, by the way. My Patreon link is in the description, so you guys can support me as well on the YouTube channel. My links will be in the description below. So, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you like it so YouTube can recommend more of these great videos out to you guys. If you do that, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, what are your thoughts on National Fairgrounds possibly coming in in the near future? Do you think that it's great to see the National Fairgrounds coming back, or you don't really want it because of noise issues? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below because that is a possibility of there being some noise issues. And what are your thoughts about Jeff Earnhardt going full-time with JD Motorsports in 2021? Do you think JD Motorsports made the right decision or not? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.